The ideal body weight is not a matter of taste or fashion. Medicine does not define aesthetic ranges, but healthy ranges. According to the World Health Organization, obesity and sedentary lifestyles will soon be indirectly responsible for two-thirds of deaths worldwide. Obesity leads to very serious health problems and increases the risk of many fatal diseases. So the question is, how long and in what condition do we want to live? But what does being overweight or obese mean in health terms? There is a metric for the difference between the two, the easy to calculate body mass index or BMI. It is calculated by dividing your body weight by the square of your height in meters. That is, if someone weighs 70 kilograms and is 178 centimeters or 1.78 meters tall, their BMI is 22.1, which is within the normal range. A person is considered overweight if their BMI is over 25. Between 30 and 35 is obese. Over 35 is severely obese. And over 40 is extremely obese. These values are not set by magazine editors or influencers, but by international scientific committees because they are health limits. The limits of normal values increase slightly with age. However, BMI is not an infallible metric. It does not take into account natural differences in physique or the weight of muscle mass associated with exercise, and in these cases may not be a true indicator of being overweight. A different measurement method should also be used for children. However, on average, BMI can still give an indication if someone's increasing body weight may lead to health problems. In such cases, the exact extent of the problem will be revealed by measuring abdominal circumference, body fat percentage, or post-exercise oxygen consumption. Obesity can also be caused by genetics, hormonal imbalances, or certain organ diseases. Therefore, it is particularly important for recovery that additional symptoms reveal if obesity is caused by a disease. However, it is more common that we simply consume more energy than our body needs. Energy is measured in kilocalories, or calories in everyday language. During normal functioning, our body uses energy. For example, it burns calories for thinking and especially for movement. The more we move, the more calories we burn. So the rule may seem simple. Consume only as much energy as you use, and vice versa. Move at least enough to burn all the calories you take in. And of course, more if you want to lose weight. If we don't, our body will start to store fat and build up fat stores in different parts of our body, depending on our physique. This storage once played a key role in the survival of mankind. But nowadays, when any energy-dense food is readily available in large quantities without physical exertion, it makes it difficult to maintain a healthy weight. And the extra calories consumed lead to weight gain. Although it can be said that the daily calorie requirement of an average adult is around 2,000 calories, the exact energy requirement is largely determined by physical activity. But it can also be influenced by body weight, gender, age, mental activity, and even outside temperature. Different activities require different amounts of energy. For example, they burn calories depending on their intensity. If we consume just 200 calories more than we use every day, we will gain 8 kilograms of stored fat in a year. Excess weight makes it harder to move, but if you don't move enough, you burn even fewer calories and you find yourself in a vicious circle. The biggest health risk is fat tissue in the abdomen, mainly in the viscera. Obesity inevitably comes with a number of chronic diseases that make everyday life difficult. The fat deposits also interfere with the hormonal system and even the immune system, which puts obese people at much greater risk of infections and epidemics. Even if chronic diseases can be controlled with medication, the quality of our daily lives as we live longer and longer is not the same. Unfortunately, the problem is starting to appear earlier and earlier from a very young age. 
It is therefore particularly important that we all adopt healthy eating and exercise habits. Many of the comorbidities associated with obesity are reversible, and the sooner weight loss occurs, the greater the reversibility of the negative effects. However, getting rid of severe excess weight is not so easy. Excess calories are stored by our bodies in special fat cells. These cells, when they become full but detect additional excess energy, start to divide so that the fat layer on our body grows. Such cell storages store energy super safely and only allow it to be used when there are persistently fewer calories coming into your body than you burn. Many people experience this as starvation. Our brain takes this very poorly because the brain cannot take energy directly from the fat packed in the cell stores unless it has been converted by our liver. And that takes time. Because of this, our brains don't perform as well during diets and constantly send hunger signals to the body, encouraging us to take in calories quickly. These storage fat cells stay in place even when they are depleted. So later, the excess calories go straight into these fat cells and fat stores form much faster than if our body had to build them from scratch. That's why people who have never been overweight find it easier to maintain a healthy weight even with minor fluctuations. Obesity is best prevented because every extra kilo becomes harder to get rid of. And with every extra kilo, the risk of chronic diseases and their complications increases and quality of life deteriorates. But if it's so hard, how do you lose weight? And how can you maintain the normal weight you achieved? Lasting and healthy weight loss takes a long time, dedication, and perseverance. Treatment of very severe obesity may require the coordinated help of several specialists. Why we eat more may have a family or cultural background, but it may also be linked to our stressed lifestyles. We consume huge quantities of fatty, sugary, calorie-rich foods and drinks quickly and without chewing thoroughly. We often try to solve psychological problems by eating, which acts as a stress release or self-reward. It is recommended to seek professional help to identify and solve these problems. To make a lasting change, we need to change our eating habits and gradually increase our physical activity. This is true even if you are overweight and not obese. It is important, however, that if you want to get rid of serious excess weight, medical supervision is recommended before and during exercise. Unfortunately, our work and lifestyle today involves very little physical activity. However, exercise has an essential role to play in both prevention and treatment. For adults, two and a half hours of dynamic outdoor exercise per week and for young people, one hour per day is essential for a healthy life. Regular exercise should be a part of our lives, even if we don't need to lose any excess weight. Just 10 to 15 minutes of regular daily dynamic exercise significantly retunes the body and helps to reduce weight and the risk of serious diseases. Exercise has a key role in preventing cardiovascular disease, reducing the risk of depression, and alleviating anxiety symptoms. Obesity is a growing problem worldwide, and research is being conducted on many fronts. It has been observed, for example, that the genes responsible for our biological clock also have a major impact on our metabolism. Disturbances in the sleep biorhythm trigger increased energy storage in our body, which can lead to obesity in the long term. Other research has looked at the role of gut flora in the immune system, nervous system, and overall metabolic function. It has been observed that there are quantitative and qualitative differences in the composition of gut bacteria in normal weight and obese people. The latter also obtain energy from otherwise indigestible dietary fiber. Being overweight also means a low level of persistent inflammation in the body, in which altered gut flora also seems to play a role. But what can we do ourselves? To cure obesity, consult a doctor, seek the help of professionals, and be persistent. If possible, prevent obesity, overcome being overweight. Drink plenty of fluids, exercise regularly, watch the energy content and quantity of food you eat, 
and make sure your children develop good eating and exercise habits. Subscribe to our channel. Don't miss out on any new episodes.